Hello guys. Hi everybody. Selamat petang. Good evening everyone. My name is Dishan Kumar. I will be your co-moderator today for our live webinar on Don't Lose Your Marbles Over Alzheimer's. What you should know about this misunderstood dementia. Okay. I punya co-moderator adalah Dr. Sandra Raman, a general practitioner from King Hours. She has more than 600,000 followers on TikTok. And uh, Dr. Sandra is known for her health-based content and which she explains brilliantly. So you guys yang tak follow-follow lagi, pergi follow TikTok dia. And we have a very special guest for you guys, Associate Professor Dr. Asrini Abdul Raza, Consultant Psychiatrist, Hospital University Science Malaysia. She is currently the Deputy Chairman, Brain and Behaviour Cluster, School of Medical Sciences, USM. She's also active in uh, NGOs, currently as Vice President of Prasatuan Therapy Psycho-Spiritual Malaysia and has initiate, initiated the Kelantan Scarer Support Group for Dementia. Welcome, welcome, Prof. Thank you, Disha. Hi, Prof. Hi, Prof. hi, everyone. Hi, hi. So, Dr. Sandra, apakah topic, uh, how do we start our topic today? How do we begin this topic today? Okay, if you leave it up to me how I want to begin the topic today is that saya nak bagi tahu semua orang is that kita nak bercakap tentang Alzheimer sebab we actually nak uh, kita kata don't want to really use the word nyanyuk okay untuk semua warga emas kita. Kita just very remeh, kita ambil hal ni remeh tau. Okay, warga emas kita tu kita selalu kata alah dia tu pelupa lah, alah abah tu pelupa lah and everything. But actually kemungkinan besar deep down mereka mungkin menghadapi uh, kita kata uh, simptom dementia. Okay, dementia tu dia bukan penyakit lah, dia lebih kepada simptom. Salah satu penyakit dementia adalah Alzheimer's and since September 21st is Alzheimer's Day so that's how we are starting the topic today. Okay, Prof, let's start off with apakah itu... Okay, before that guys, if you have any questions, uh, please ask in the chat box. Eh? Kita ada chat. So boleh tanya apa-apa soalan you guys nak tanya kat kita orang. So after, at the end of the webinar, we will try to answer all your questions. Okay, so let's start off with Prof. What, maybe you can give us an explanation. Apakah itu sebenarnya dementia? Okay, thank you, Dishan. Thank you, Dr. Sadra. Yeah, in uh, celebrating World Alzheimer's Day, usually we do the memory walk so that to remember uh, or to appreciate those having uh, Alzheimer's disease. But because of the COVID 19, the theme for this year is no dementia. So, your question is actually related with the theme, which is no, why is dementia? Okay, for uh, Malaysian or Malay, Usually uh, misunderstood dementia with nyanyok, okay? Right. And nyanyok has been replaced the term of memory uh, forgetting. A uh, normal forgetting also nyanyok. Mm. Dementia also nyanyok. Also so we nyanyok. have to, to, to differentiate between uh, dementia is actually a disease or uh, a progressive disease, meaning that you have a memory problem and it progress worse uh, over the time. So meaning that it's not just normal forgetting, it's not just a normal process of elderly. It is a pathological process, meaning that it is a disease. So the disease itself actually would deteriorate over time. However, when we detect it early, we can slow down the disease progress. Mm -hmm. So that is how to differentiate. It's just a misunderstanding of the term itself. Hmm. So that is what is dementia. So dementia is sebenarnya satu benda yang besar kan and Alzheimer yeah. is one part of it. Sebenarnya dia ada banyak part of different types of dementia kan. Yeah. Okay, so we are talking specifically on Alzheimer's, correct? Okay, yeah. Because dementia is one big umbrella of uh, so, all the uh, people that having problem with cognition, meaning that problem with their thinking. In fact, in their one bahasa uh, the nyanyo or dementia is kata perangai ke anak-anakan, meaning that they regress, become a child, but in a big body. So uh, with the behavioral changes, kind of that thing. So uh, uh, dementia is a big umbrella term. Under it is Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, 
frontal temporal Parkinson disease, dementia, Lewy body dementia, and all other type of dementia. But the most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, with comprised of more than fifty percent. So it is the largest causes of dementia. So people tend to put Alzheimer's disease because that is the most common causes of dementia. Okay. Um, maybe Prof boleh explain tentang risk factor. Who has the risk? Uh, okay. People, uh, is it older people, younger people, macam mana? How, how are you looking at? Okay. When we look into Alzheimer disease per se, the risk of having the disease is increased by age. So meaning that when you age, uh, when you live longer, the more aging you are, the higher risk you have. So for example, those having uh, age 65 years old, the risk is double every five years. So one in 16 people that age more than 65 would have to have, I mean, is estimated to have dementia. And then when you reach 85, one in six. So it becomes triple. So kind of uh, the risk is increasing with age. Another one is the uh, familiar factors, meaning that uh, you have genetic history. So you might have, uh, if your grandmother or uh, your mother, or is there any in your family having Alzheimer's disease? So you are at higher risk compared to others to get Alzheimer's disease. So, siapa-siapa dekat family kita yang ada, memang kita punya risk is It's higher. higher. Risk is higher. Because Alzheimer's disease is said to, due to the genetic predisposing. However, the genetic testing is so messy because not just one genetic factors that involve, but most commonly is that associated with Alzheimer is apolipoprotein E4. But again, when we do the genetic study, it is so uh, messy because there is not only one, but more than two or uh, can be three. So that is how we say that if you have family history, so you're at higher risk to get Alzheimer's disease. So okay. there is so, other risk. Actually, okay, so what Prof tengah cakap untuk those who are listening to, okay, genetic factor, genetic ni memang dia predisposition dia memang besar. Okay, kalau kita dah ada, okay, so most of the time kita akan ada dia punya bawaan dia. Alright, so nak buat this genetic testing kat Malaysia so a bit susah, okay, a lot of time kita kena keluarkan duit, okay, yeah. memang susah sikit lah, so kalau kita dah memang tahu, okay, dalam family kita tu ada, so kita boleh berjaga-jaga, okay, so macam mana kita nak tahu, okay, macam mana kita nak tahu whether kita ada Alzheimer ke tak adalah dengan kita detect dulu family member kita. So warga emas kita sekarang, ayah kita ke, tok kita ke, tok wan kita ke. So macam mana depa ada so kita kena bawa jumpa depa, right. So ramai yang ingat prof kan, um, Alzheimer's ni ataupun so called penyakit pelupa eh, orang kita su suka nak cakap penyakit pelupa ni, selalu dia kata associate dengan umur tua. 70 lebih macam tu. Tapi ada juga yang kita kata early onset Alzheimer. So boleh tak Prof, um, you know, like bagi tahu kenapa ada yang early onset atau early onset tu sebenarnya start daripada umur berapa supaya kita boleh uh, sarankan kepada masyarakat kita bila mereka boleh bawa family mereka untuk testing. Okay, ya yeah, Dr. Sandra. If you have kalau kita ada family history, definitely the tendency untuk kita develop Alzheimer could be a bit earlier. Usually, kita kata Alzheimer is at the age of 65. Okay, but if you have family history, so you tend to get it earlier in, in that sense, meaning that earlier than 65. Yeah. However, there is other type of dementia, which is not Alzheimer, that can present as early as uh, 40 or in late 30s. Oh, okay? late 30s juga. Late yeah. 30s juga. Yeah. Ah. So, uh, but then okay. it's usually it's not associated <laughs> with Alzheimer's disease, but due to other condition. So, for example, frontal temporal can uh, frontal temporal dementia, hmm. where the pathology ataupun uh, masalah dia berada dekat brain uh, otak depan dan hmm. otak sisi. So, bahagian otak uh, yang tertentu dan ini yang biasanya uh, datang dengan early onset of dementia. 
Tetapi untuk Alzheimer disease, usually dia datang dengan late onset kecuali mereka yang mempunyai sejarah keluarga. Cuma bila kita buat imagine tu, uh, untuk Alzheimer uh, disease, biasanya brain dia tu, the whole brain is shrunken. So daripada brain imagine tu, the whole brain, the whole... Oh, otak dia macam kecil akan... Shrunken, kecil-kecil, oh. ibarat macam nyok tua. Ha, Dr. Sandra, hmm. ya, dia dah lekang daripada temburu kelapa tu. Ya, itu, that is how I usually describe to my patient. The metaphor ibarat uh, kelapa yang telah lekang. Tetapi untuk kes-kes yang lain, uh, macam kata tadi, frontal temporal, bahagian otak depan dan sisi sahaja yang terjejas berbanding dengan Alzheimer disease, the seluruhan otak. Jadi uh, itu biasanya kita bezakan uh, kenapa adanya Uh, yang early onset biasanya disebabkan oleh pathological yang berbeza. Hmm, okey. Tapi uh, prof macam mana nak nak tahu umur berapa yang saya nak bagi test? Saya ni dah dah early thirties dah. Kalau early thirties nak bagi test tu okay. macam mana? Sekarang aku dah tak tahu dah. <laughs> Tomorrow we go test. <laughs> Usually tak semua orang pergi untuk testing. Okey, okay, biasanya kita kena kena gejala awal ataupun tanda-tanda awal uh, nak ada kan Uh, kita panggil penyakit demensia ataupun Alzheimer disease. Okay, biasanya kita kata uh, penurunan fungsi kognitif ataupun fungsi pemikiran. Uh, biasanya untuk Alzheimer disease, uh, gejala awal adalah pelupa. Lupa. Lupa, selalu lupa, uh, tak ingat letak sana, tak ingat letak sini. Itu adalah gejala awal. Satu, memory impairment. lah. Yang kedua adalah uh, suka untuk kita buat planning, merancang, Okay, as, uh, as simple as untuk kita nak buat anything, kita rasa susah. Susah untuk menyelesaikan masalah. Okay, kadang-kadang tu uh, normal task yang kita biasa buat, kita dah tak boleh buat. Ha? Uh, seterusnya adalah masalah komunikasi, kita tend to uh, forget word. Kita tak ingat perkataan. Kita miss word. Ha? Hilang. Word finding tu hilang. So, uh, kemungkinan kadang-kadang uh, seorang tu, patient saya tu, Uh, dia very educated. Hmm. So family member notice bila dia text masa tu tak ada lagi smartphone but is more text messaging. Bila dia text missing words. Bila missing words sebab anak dia profesor, anak dia kata no, ah uh, we detect the my father could have dementia sebab dia hilang. Text tu tiba-tiba sebab dia cikgu bahasa yang sangat pakar berbahasa. Hmm. Biasanya walaupun dia messaging dia akan guna ayat yang panjang hmm. tapi tiba-tiba dia missing satu words, dua tiga words yang Uh, family member rasa, eh, this is something is not right. Uh, hmm. tu, uh, another one adalah keliru, disorientation. Uh, keliru pada masa, tempat, tak ingat beberapa. Okay. Uh, uh, last uh, ataupun yang lain adalah uh, dari segi pengecaman. Uh, kita tak boleh nak cam. Sama ada tak boleh nak cam orang. Uh, biasanya yang pengecaman ni, uh, yang tak cam orang ni, biasanya kalau awal-awal ni dia tak cam orang yang lama dia tak jumpa. Yang family ni dia masih kekal. Kecuali bila dia dah late stage, semuanya dia hilang. Dan another uh, important uh, aspect adalah dia mengalami kemurungan ataupun, dan juga uh, kegagalan dan kawal emosi. Sebab dia start rasa, what is this? Uh, kenapa aku tak jadi macam dulu? Masa hmm. tu dia masih lagi boleh berfikir. Tetapi dia rasa start to uh, figure out. Apa ni? Uh, kenapa jadi macam ni? Why I'm not behaving like old me? Hmm. So, macam frustration. Uh, kan? uh, frustration, all that thing. Biasanya kita jumpa gejala awal ni. Uh, uh, depression atau anxiety di peringkat awal. Uh, dia, dia presented to us dengan depressed, dengan mengamuk. Usually elderly dia akan mengamuk jadi lebih sensitif. Sensitif so pun tak kena dengan anak-anak dan hilang minat, hilang yakin diri. So uh, that is uh, one important topic uh, ataupun important symptom bila gejala awal uh, dementia. So okay. dia bukan berlaku sahaja uh, tak ingat tetapi a collection. Kalau ikut kita punya diagnostic criteria satu atau lebih kognitif uh, domain yang terlibat. Kognitif ni adalah Uh, domain pemikiran hmm. so one or more so kita ni kalau kita tengok dan dia uh, peringkat awal dia tak ganggu lagi kehidupan dia boleh lagi bekerja uh, maksud saya uh, menjalani kehidupan biasa tetapi uh, bila dia major dia uh, tak boleh dia kena bergantung pada orang lain huh? totally hmm. dependent to others so uh, itu adalah 
gejala awal dan macam mana kita kata deans actually dementia not other things okay 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 prof mungkin before we go to the next top uh, question mungkin nak tanya kita punya participant yang tengah tengok sekarang ni siapa all these guys that have been watching you guys let me ask you guys a question you guys boleh jawab lah dekat chat box kita you guys ada tak family member yang ada dementia ke atau pelupa ke atau uh, siapa yang dekat family ke atau you kenal tak siapa-siapa yang ada disease ini ataupun you rasa you suspect dia orang mungkin ada dementia ada alzheimer kot so let us know in the chat box let us know siapa atuk ke nenek ke family ke Uh, you guys sendiri ke takut dah dah pelupa dah macam ni and everything so let us know in the chat box um, let's go to the next question dr sandra so um, why why prof do we miss actually sebenarnya uh, kenapa kadang-kadang kalau pesakit datang kita termiss antara uh, dementia dengan Alzheimer's ataupun just regular lupa macam tu. Do we actually downplay tak simptom-simptom? Kalau hmm. antara pesakit yang prof dapatkan bila family bawa ke prof tu, ada tak kita sebenarnya sebagai masyarakat downplay simptom tu? Okay. Uh, sebenarnya uh, dementia ni ataupun nyanyok ni ataupun Alzheimer disease sebab kita kalau kita fokus pada Alzheimer disease selalunya disalah artikan dengan normal process of aging itu yang menyebabkan uh, lambat mereka datang kepada uh, kami untuk dapat rawatan ataupun uh, lambat datang kepada doktor sebab dia rasa macam that is normal process of aging hmm. so bila nak normal process of aging dia tak datang kepada kita untuk dia kata as i having Uh, dementia, biasanya dia akan kata uh, Biasalah saya lupa-lupa sikit Orang tua biasa je lupa sikit Dan dia normalize the symptom Tapi dok, prof, uh, even kita okay. kalau sekarang dah so, lupa Akan cakap, oh saya dah tua lah Banyak lupa lah yes. lupa, So we always we always say tu. that So the take home message sebenarnya Dekat sini yang prof nak bagi tahu everybody Those who are listening tu sebenarnya it's it's kita punya like slang tau kita cakap ni oh yeah. lupalah this and that everything yeah. tapi sebenarnya pelupa is not a symptom of aging tak semestinya kita menua tu adalah diikuti dengan uh, kita kata perangai lupa ataupun kita kata nyanyuk ha, tak ada ada je orang tua yang umur 98 you tanyalah daripada semua anak dia orang okey nama dia pun eh yang bagi du- duit siapa okey yang tak bagi duit siapa semua depa ingat okey so we should not normalize benda ni sebenarnya kalau tua maksudnya you akan lupa ah hmm. uh, itu hmm. yang kita nak ajar dan belajar bersama-sama hari ini okey okay. so antara ni jessela um, prof kalau di diagnose ada alzheimers ada tak treatment atau okay. cure macam tu okey This is the sad part of this disease. Hmm. Sebenarnya. Okay. This a degeneration disease. Maksudnya penyakit ni akan tetap uh, progress to the end where it become a totally different personality, a totally dependent to others. Cuma one good part about this illness adalah if we detect early, we can slow down the progress. We can actually the elders will enjoy their best quality of life where they aging okay so uh, the key word here there is medication at early onset okay early onset to to actually slow down the progress sebabnya apa yang berlaku sebenarnya uh, kat dalam brain kita untuk alzheimer berlakunya sel-sel mati dan sel-sel mati ini, sel-sel otak yang mati, sel-sel saraf yang mati telah menempel di pada uh, permukaan otak. Jadi uh, fungsi otak tu sendiri akan mengecil. Bila mengecil, makin lama dia makin banyak tertempel. Macam kita itu image dia tempel-tempel tempel dekat uh, otak kita. Hmm. Uh, kita panggil tau protein ataupun uh, tau protein beta amyloid. Uh, yang ini adalah hasil daripada uh, sel-sel saraf yang mati. So dia menempel dekat permukaan otak. Jadi Obat ini akan berfungsi untuk mengurangkan proses sel-sel mati itu dan menyebabkan kalau dia tetap generating pun, dia slow down the process. Okay, satu. 
Yang kedua adalah kita ada juga bila datang pada peringkat yang lewat, kita ada juga ubat yang untuk mengurangkan tingkah laku yang teruk. Okay? Sebab bila penyakit ni dia akan regress, dia akan jadi ke anak-anakkan. Jadi budak-budak. So masa tu option yang kita ada adalah medication to actually control the behavior. So jadinya ada ubat, ada uh, yang untuk mengurangkan uh, simptom gejala awal, uh, slow down the progress. Hmm. Ada juga ubat yang ke datang ketika yang teruk untuk mengawal tingkah laku. Ya, yeah, cuma nya nak kata is it cure? It is not curing, but we can control the symptom, and then at least our elders, our parents can live longer with increased quality of life. Okay. Okay, Prof. Talking about yang progression yang Prof cakap tadi, Azam. Mm -hmm. Starting tu, orang macam like Prof cakap lupa words, lupa ni sikit, mm -hmm. lupa tu sikit, and then that's the start. How mm -hmm. does that dementia, uh, Alzheimer's dementia ni, how does it progress? Like at the end stage tu, orang sebenarnya what is the condition okay. of the patient yang dok okay. dengan ni? Okay, kalau kita lihat uh, peringkat uh, uh, Alzheimer ni, uh, kita ambil penyakit Alzheimer lah. Sebab kalau penyakit lain-lain uh, sikit dia punya approach. Uh, oh, maksudnya yeah. dementia jenis lain-lain sikit. Tapi kita ambil yang Alzheimer. Sebab Alzheimer ni most common. Uh, bila peringkat awal, biasanya dia fungsi ringan. Ringan saja dia tak ingat, uh, dia keliru, uh, dia tak boleh belajar new things. Bila you cerita kat dia, dia ingat sekarang ni, lepas tu dia tak ingat. Itu dia tanya benda lain pula. Dia tanya pula. Dia keep repeating asking the same question. Dan communication dia boleh communicate. Tapi masalah sikit je. Masalah tak ingat tu tak nampak sangat. Cuma yang nampak kat sini adalah kemurungan. Depression is very high during early stage. Depression sebab dia rasa macam, what is happening to me? Why? Why I become dependent to others? Dan kadang-kadang kat sini dia ada banyak paranoid. Siap wasang ke buruk. Yang ni yang dia suruhkan tempat lain, dia tak ingat lepas tu, uh, dia tuduh orang kind of that thing. So, lepas tu, uh, bila dia makin merusuk, uh, peringkat yang uh, sederhana, moderate, uh, dia akan menyebabkan dia lagi, uh, peting, judgment dia poor. Poor judgment. Hmm. Uh, dia buat tindakan yang salah, dia lebih keliru, uh, dan dia tak boleh, dia start tak boleh menguruskan diri. Peringkat awal dia boleh lagi maintain diri dia. Boleh makan, boleh pakai, okay. cuma dia dah ada masalah dengan little help, dia boleh buat. Tapi hmm. bila tahap yang seterusnya, dia dah start ada uh, susut daya untuk menguruskan diri ataupun become more dependent to others. And then that this time, they, they presented more on behavioral, behavioral symptom. They hmm. might have, uh, kita might panggil, Uh, hearing voices ataupun psikosis lah orang uh, bahasa perubatan ataupun hmm. dengan dengan suara kepercayaan kepercayaan pelik uh, okay uh, dan juga uh, gangguan tidur nah hmm. this time dia tidur. dah uh, go pada gangguan tak boleh tidur usually in our population last time bila kita tak buat awareness masa I first start my memory clinic uh, 2006 my patient cuma datang dekat peringkat ini moderate to severe Cuma sekarang saya jumpa banyak yang datang early onset sebab kita dah buat awareness more educated people is actually recognize this is something wrong with me I not uh, come for assessment hmm. so uh, awareness is important lah so uh, and then the late stage ni is actually big bumps maksudnya dia dah jadi baby yang semua diuruskan oleh orang lain dia tak boleh bercakap yeah. minimal totally dependence to others kadang-kadang uh, uh, fungsi yang uh, yang yang merosot dan kadang-kadang dia dah tak kenal dah uh, this late stage ni tak kenal siapa-siapa tak kenal anak mungkin dia kenal anak dia yang rapat dia dah tak kenal orang uh, they come with a lot of uh, behavioral issues so this is how the disease progress hmm. cuba sekarang ni kita nak tackle supaya early onset kalau ada masalah ingatan, kita boleh bezakan apa masalah ingatan yang normal. Maksudnya, in, in general, sebenarnya kita ada satu kajian. Yang maksudnya, brain cell kita sebenarnya dah start merosok di peringkat, kita panggil molekular. Peringkat molekular. As early as age 35. Alamak. Itu, kita dah start, brain cell kita dah start merosok. Okay? Ini kita dapat dari fMRI study all that thing.
Okay. So brain cell kita memang merosot. So memang secara uh, physiological dia start merosot slowly. Tapi okay. tak to the extent that kita ada masalah dementia. Hmm. So biasanya bila masalah ingatan kita bila kita ni uh, kita biasanya disebabkan lah hilang tumpuan. We have so many things in our mind, in our brain. So kita tak boleh nak fokus, so we tend to get to forget. Tapi dengan uh, extra effort biasanya kita boleh recall balik. Hmm. Untuk kes dementia, dia tak boleh recall dah. Dia tak boleh ingat dah. And then this is the one that kita panggil ada satu simptom dia panggil confabulate. Dia start reka cerita untuk untuk fill in the missing gap. Fill in the blanks. Oh. Ha, fill in the yes. blanks. Dia confirm boleh. Dia cakap yeah. cerita. Okay. So, so actually, I do I do get that kind of cases banyak juga dekat klinik where tiba-tiba you know anak dia yang memang duduk dengan mak dia the whole time atau ayah dia and suddenly actually that story does not exist at all. Hmm. And they also sometimes, um, mereka rasa malu actually that they cannot recall, they don't know what's wrong with them. But they know there's something wrong and then they rasa malu. So, they cover up dengan memberitahu um, something else. So, tapi kan dekat sini something kita learn. All this time we were talking about kita cakap pelupa, kita cakap nyanyuk. Tapi kita juga dapat tahu that sebenarnya warga emas, I think, ataupun at least 45 and above, kita still boleh ada depression dengan anxiety. So, masyarakat kita sekarang ni sebenarnya, um, we Malaysians, we like benda yang viral. Okay, so right now um, after COVID and everything, mental health is viral. I think around a four or five years ago, kalau kita nak cakap tentang mental health, you know, everybody is very um, judgmental lah kita kata. So ramai yang sebenarnya tak aware um, orang yang lebih tua dan warga emas sebenarnya boleh mengalami depression dan anxiety. Mereka tak semestinya start daripada umur 20-an. So bila kita dah tengok, so like Prof kata, bila kita dah tengok, eh our parents macam kenapa ya, uh, always like murung. My mom always suka cakap banyak and then suddenly like, I, I masak pun tak complain. Our mothers kan kalau masak, you dah ada anak 10 pun, you masak, your mother is still going to complain about you and hmm. your cooking. Okay, so when you dah notice macam tu and then you know you watching TV, lepas tu diorang just diam. Okay, so ini adalah kemungkinan juga tanda-tanda murung yang mungkin anda boleh bawa parents untuk check supaya kita boleh find out atau figure out a way maybe mereka ada um, Alzheimer's. Mereka tak ada dementia, then baru kita figure out ada Alzheimer's. Sebab saya, um, even recently, saya ada seorang pesakit yang uh, kencing manis. Okay, so dia ada luka dekat kaki dia and then dia dressing every day. But everybody miss out the point that sebenarnya dia tengah ada depression. Okay, hmm. dia, she actually has depression because dia jaga somebody yang sangat healthy hmm. dan dia jaga makan and everything and then dia ada ulcer yang sangat besar sampai masuk hospital but everybody's complaint was uh, mak tak nak makan, mak tak ada nafsu makan, uh, doktor hmm. masuk air, doktor hmm. masuk vitamin and everything. So when I told them that actually mak looks like ada this and that, nobody believed. Nobody believe but with a very small dose, kita bagi dia a little bit of antidepressants dengan also um, macam anti-anxiety sikit sebab husband dia also not well, you know. And within five days, dia dah, she masuk bilik dressing, boleh senyum. Before that, it's like dia akan berdebar nak masuk bilik sebab sakit, I nak buka, nak cuci luka dia. And she can smile and dia tak lalu makan nasi sebulan. And then she can start eating rice already. So, we also need to know that dia adalah tanda daripada, you know, probably daripada Alzheimer's. Mm. So, on that note, Prof, if somebody ada depression, anxiety, ataupun kita kata, uh, you know, all these kind of other um, health, mental health problems, if they have it from young, apa, apa pandangan Prof? Do you think like since you said, kita punya sel kita pun dah memang merosot a little bit by little bit after 35 kan. So orang yang dah ada depression daripada umur dia dah 20, mereka makan ubat and everything. Should they get themselves actually tested untuk Alzheimer's? Macam maybe buat dia punya brain mapping yang MRI ke atau macam mana? Okay. Um, not necessarily uh, those having the, uh, depression having dementia. Okay, uh, tapi 
what important aspect yang Sandra, Dr. Sandra cerita tadi adalah uh, the misdiagnosis of depression among elderly. Hmm. Sebab elderly tak presented dengan crying spell all that thing. They presented dengan somatic symptom. Uh, so you 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 actually portray a good aspect of depression in elderly. Cuma nya uh, overlapping between depression and Alzheimer ataupun dementia is very strong. Sebabnya ada uh, depression yang presented macam uh, uh, nyanyok macam dementia. Sebab kita panggil pseudo dementia. Ia itu uh, yeah. iaitu dia ada depression tapi dipresented dengan cognitive impairment ataupun gejala-gejala kognitif yang kita bincang tadi macam nak nak jadi macam nyanyuk ha ah, okey ataupun another one adalah memang berlakunya gejala kemurungan di dalam dementia yang peringkat awal yang kita bincang tadi so the overlapping is real ah, jadi ah, dalam elderly saya baca juga chatbot ni Uh, ada yang mengalami grief, uh, kematian, grief proses terutama dalam uh, suasana COVID-19 ni uh, grief kita dah uh, macam terpaksa grief seorang, uh, grief alone dan sebabnya dengan dying alone, grieving alone, uh, uh, death pun alone so uh, this is actually can cause uh, uh, depression okay. so kita kena tengok uh, satu-satu uh, benda uh, maksudnya faktor apa cumanya kalau lah dia ada kemurungan peringkat uh, muda-muda not necessarily they might develop dementia later on cuma depression itself may presented may presented with cognitive impairment dia memang mm-hmm. ada mm-hmm. kalau tak treated dia memang ada uh, residual uh, ataupun uh, gejala-gejala masalah cognition masalah pemikiran Right? Cuma cumanya gitulah kita kena bezakan cuma kalau kita boleh treat depression sebab depression is recovery is recoverable so maksudnya boleh dirawat boleh sembuh so treat depression aggressively because we can actually uh, stop the progress of other illnesses sebab yang ni memang uh, depression ni memang boleh dirawat ada ubat dementia ada juga ubat tetapi ubat dia um, fungsi yang berbeza okey hmm. Okay. okay. So yang dekat kita punya participant sekarang ni semua, Dr. Sandra nak tanya kat sini. Ada tak since you all ada yang carers kan? Okay, so ada yang kata uh, both my parents suffered from it. Ada yang kata apa uh, my grandfather. Ada yang kata uh, nenek saya and all those things kan. Ada tak antara you all yang merupakan carer? That means that you yang sebenarnya menjaga, okay, parents ataupun grandparents ataupun aunties, uncle anda yang ada dementia ataupun Alzheimer jika anda ada cuba anda cerita kat chat box tu apa sebenarnya um, masalah yang anda ada bila menjaga mereka, ada tak apa-apa burden yang you all rasa, yang you all nak share sebab okay, kita cakap dah tentang pesakit tapi kita nak cakap tentang you all juga yang menjaga mereka sebab definitely tak senang okay? tak senang sama sekali untuk you all yang go through juga, so okay. jika ada you all message kat situ, kami akan baca and we will try to um, apa tu uh, get to your perspective juga. Ya, yeah, because I think perspective tu penting. Um, prof, apa prof punya pendapat tentang carers ni? Uh, prof pun ada personal uh, family member yang ada ni and everything. What is your pers- your own uh, opinion on this? On hmm. orang yang jaga sebenarnya orang yang ada dementia atau Alzheimer's? Okay. Uh, the carer burden is huge. Maksudnya hmm. Memang uh, untuk menjaga pesakit dementia ni atau penyakit Alzheimer ni dia punya uh, dia punya ibarat carry bag tu berbagage baggage bukan satu saja banyak baggage yang you kena carry you kena carry kesabaran you kena carry kerana cuma nya uh, bila kita detect early so what my my example sebab I, uh, I detect my mother in law having early type of dementia where others couldn't actually detect. Cuma yeah. I detect sebabnya dia uh, masalah dengan dia nak uh, uh, dengan remote remote TV, instrumental. Ah oh. uh, dia, dia selalu cakap TV dia rosak. Hmm. Ataupun dia ada masalah dengan dia punya handphone, dia selalu cakap orang tak bayar bil dia. Okey. Tetapi sebenarnya that is early onset. Maksudnya masa tu kita tanya memory dia okey, 
Okey lagi sebab uh, mungkin sebab bidang saya. So saya boleh detect that is uh, kita panggil loss of executive functioning. So dia boleh daripada boleh dependent dia start macam uh, tak tahu makanan dia ada ke tak. Macam dia how dia dia want to cook rice tu macam tak boleh cook. Kind of that thing. So early hmm. detection is important. Tapi bila saya bagi ubat, kita saya start early. Definitely I'm not the one that treat. I have to bring to other doctors. Hmm. Sebab we couldn't treat our own family member. Yeah. Cumanya uh, masa tu very early. So bila very early, dia punya progression is slow down. Dia slow down dan dia tak dia dia boleh masih lagi boleh independent. Cumanya bila progress to disease ini yang berlaku pada orang lain, Alhamdulillah saya tak berlaku. My mother in law is very well uh, able to still look after. Cuma dia dia macam Sandra kata lah, dia tak ingat sign or thing, dia tend to confabulate kind of that thing. Hmm. Okay, tapi uh, kita kita ada teknik. Ya. Kita tak ada lah kita argue with, with them. Nah, sebab kalau kita argue, kita nak betulkan. Kata no, no, the fact is wrong. So hmm. it cause a lot of conflict. So uh, sebab dia masih lagi tahu uh, the position dia adalah mak uh, kita ni anak dan kita nak start yeah. arguing. So it, a lot of conflict. So biasanya kita buat validation validation terapi. Maksudnya validation just validate. Hmm. Atau kita buat reality orientation kind of that. There is a lot of terapi yang kita biasa ajar pada Kara. So Kara ni bila uh, mak ni ada perubahan tingkah laku, uh, kita ada konflik. Uh, dan konflik ni yang ni yang menyebabkan kita punya uh, increase burden of care. Kita rasa stress out. Kadang-kadang anak yang duduk jauh, dia cerita lain. Sedangkan dia yang dia jaga is lain. So anak yang tak tahu, this happen to my my patient lah, my carer dekat klinik. So bila uh, balik ke rumah ni, uh, yang duduk KL katakan, kita duduk Kelantan, duduk, duduk KL ni, uh, duduk Uh, scrutinize, you are not doing mark ni, 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 sedangkan hmm. they are doing the best, so this is the thing that we have to have a good communication between the family member and also to have a rotation so that seorang jaga tu boleh ada care leave kalau dia oversee uh, tempat saya training dulu, uh, dia ada care, care leave, maksudnya uh, government sediakan ataupun NGO sediakan seorang yang untuk care bercuti so they need the leave So kalau dalam Malaysia konteks, perhaps uh, giliran adik-beradik, so that bukannya duduk dengan abang saja, duduk dengan kak saja, so yes. giliran, so reduce the burden. Sebab kadang-kadang dia datang dengan uh, perangai ke anak-anak kan, kadang-kadang dia nak makanan yang sama. Hmm. Makanan yang sama, yang sama. Dan nak waktu tu, waktu tu juga. Dia, eh, dia regress jadi anak-anak kecil. Hmm. So uh, and then uh, selain daripada yang uh, biasanya yang ada konflik adalah paranoid. Eh, dia paranoid, uh, kita ada kera yang sampai kata saya dah tukar dua tiga orang amid sebab tak tahan. Sebab dia keep accusing uh, paranoia. So, cumanya kita kena uh, bagi tahu pemahaman this part of the disease dan way to deal with it. So, maksudnya uh, daripada kita percaya, kita kata okay, uh, okay tak apa, uh, kita agree to disagree to that point rather than kita argue and then uh, banyak-banyak keedah yang kita panggil non pharmacological intervention to reduce the care. Kalau tidak uh, kebanyak care akan dapat depression, uh, akan uh, burn out, uh, akan uh, miss from work sebab tempat sejaga. Sebab dia jaga uh, baby yang besar. Hmm. Uh, bukan no longer. Sebab nak marah pun kalau anak kita boleh marah. Sebab dia is anak. Yang ni mak dia kata, mak sudah-sudahlah. So, bila hmm. mak sudah-sudah, dia jadi catastrophic reaction to the mother. Mak pun terasa hati. Hmm. Mak pun tak nak makan. Kind of that thing. So, the conflict is because of the communication and they don't know how to deal with this uh, uh, Alzheimer patient in that stage lah. Kadang-kadang, you paksa dia, uh, mak ingatkan dia, ingatkan dia. Memang dia tak boleh ingat pun. Hmm. Cuma, kita ada uh, mental exercise supaya dia sentiasa guna otak dia. So kita kata okey, uh, buatlah mental exercise macam Dr Sandra kata tadi. Uh, mental exercise sebabnya kadang-kadang kita buat as simple as uh, exercise pangkah kelenda. Dulu ada kelenda kuda eh. So yeah. it just reality orientation. So I cakap dengan dengan uh, my patient kata okey you you buy a uh, kelenda so pagi-pagi you tengok Uh, hari ni hari apa, tarikh apa, eh, eh, reality orientation, kat mana you sekarang, 
Tapi my mother in law is so smart dia kata oh sekarang mau tak guna dah that client dah we have handphone. I can see. Wow. <laughs> I can see the date. So oh, my handphone. Okay, so this is actually also yeah. dari segi kita sebagai anak-anak also in denial about our parents mungkin ada penyakit dan mungkin ada Alzheimer's and a lot of people also don't understand macam okay macam prof adalah specialist untuk uh, just say bila the parents ada Alzheimer's and everything untuk carers pula okay you also kena understand you need someone for yourself juga okay contoh macam macam saya okay your your doctors nearby yang macam general practitioner okay ataupun um, you know counseling counselor sebenarnya you all pun perlu juga somewhere to to let go your feelings okay tak salah yang you all rasa macam frustrated you guys rasa macam annoyed i mean ya yeah, come on lah anak kita yang kecil comel bila dia kata ama 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 puluh kali pun you dah rasa macam nak jadi gila okay imagine kalau orang tua keep saying the same thing you guys will have frustration you have annoyance okay tapi jangan simpan sebab Uh, kebanyakan kes bila saya lihat okay, um, progression pun jadi disebabkan oleh parents you tu sebenarnya diorang terasa okay, diorang tahu something is they have something wrong with them okay, but they don't know sometimes what is wrong with them so anda punya intonasi anda punya you know uh, gesture body language anda marah dengan mereka tu okay, menyebabkan mereka jadi sebenarnya lebih teruk instead of mereka jadi semakin okey alright also bila anda potong bila mereka bercakap okey ramai yang kadang-kadang ibu bapa tak sihat bila bawa jumpa saya okey you know mereka datang kat bilik saya just nak bercerita tau kadang-kadang cerita dia daripada dia lahir ke anak pun okey mm. jangan berhentikan mereka sebab ini pun salah satu sebenarnya a job down the memory lane okey ia akan menguatkan peringatan mereka mereka akan ingat okey sebenarnya benda ni jadi ai sebenarnya ada anak macam ni macam macam ni and bab ubat i know you all nak cepat okay you nak you ada kerja okay you kena you have places to go and your mom or your dad bila dia mula bercakap kat bilik doktor it can take like sometimes even sejam benda yang tak patut pun tapi itu adalah sejenis brain exercise juga okay so anda pun sebenarnya perlukan terapi anda pun perlukan counselling so don't beat yourself up to it macam kalau you rasa macam you depressed you anxiety macam tu and communication macam prof kata tadi I really like that just now communication among family members tau sebab um, kalau kita jenis not really like Mak Salim. Mak Salim, mereka tukar-tukar. Kat Malaysia, we don't really. Sebab even ibu bapa kita, dia nak dengan salah seorang anak je. Sebab dia dah comfortable. Okay, tengok saiz rumah juga. Sebab kadang-kadang ada yang dah ada bilik mereka sendiri macam tu. Okay, and cara layanan kita. But, if your sibling tak pernah jaga your parents yang ada masalah ni, and then you call, that, that is the last person saya suggest anda call dan complain. Eh, kau tahu tak mak buat macam ni, jenis, 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 tak tahan lagi sendat. Sebab adik atau kakak you tu, atau abang you tu tak pernah jaga dia dan dalam memory dia, eh, kau ni kan tak sayang mak ke? You, you, they keep thinking bad about you. So then everybody will start talking about you. It is not good for you. Either your best friend, or your therapist, or your doctor, you need your way out juga. Sebab bila anda sehat, minda anda sehat, baru mak ayah anda pun akan sehat sebab anda kena jaga mereka. Okay. Uh, so prof, that's actually very important. Ya, yeah, Prof, I, I, I ada pendapat, I ada soalan sikit. Macam mana Prof mungkin ada tips untuk, because tadi uh, kita punya partisipan ada jawab, dia orang cakap orang suspek mak orang mother-in-law, atuk orang suspek ada disease ni. Tapi kadang-kadang kat family kita dynamic dia berbeza. Sometimes kita punya parents, kita nak cakap dengan orang nak bawa orang pergi jumpa doktor pun orang tak nak. They know something is wrong tapi orang tak nak jumpa doktor. So how is macam mana you doc, doc, uh, prof boleh bagi tips untuk family members ni yang tengah tengok sekarang if they want to bring their parents ke grandparents ke tapi orang parents orang macam I'm okay, it's nothing, I'm fine. I don't need to go to see the doctor. Macam mana orang nak handle tu? Okay. 
Uh, yeah, that is common one. Okay. Terutama kalau you kata, okay, come and see specialist, psychiatrist. Sebabnya the field of dementia ni, sebenarnya uh, dirawat oleh geriatrician, dirawat oleh neuro, uh, neurologist, dan juga dirawat oleh psychiatrist. Uh, saya tengok dalam chat, chatbot tu, BPSD, Behavior and Psychotic Sim, uh, behavior and psychotic Symptom of Dementia. Maksudnya tingkah laku yang pelik-pelik tadi. Uh, that is why uh, kita start uh, seeing psychiatrist, kind of that thing. Cumanya, Uh, biasanya kita kata general assessment. Uh, kita nak uh, biasa kita uh, kita bawa je kita kata kita nak buat check up semua dan biasanya kita boleh check up uh, kita kalau kita ada regular check up uh, yearly check up that is very good. So uh, I mean set a routine daripada muda lagi to have a regular check up so it's easier. Tapi bila dah tua nak check up tu you kena find ways untuk pujuk, ah, basically untuk just check up not to address dia punya limitation ataupun uh, dia punya kekurangan hmm. ah, witnesses dia. Kalau tidak lagi lah dia in denial. Ah, basically you have to have a, a general check up so that uh, kita can deal with that. So biasanya bring to doctors, uh, doktor biasanya Uh, akan do the general check up macam Dr Sandra the GP do the general check up hmm. and then when to start uh, biasanya uh, at the level of starting calling a stress inventor adalah uh, dekat uh, hospital berkepakaran lah uh, ataupun uh, to refer biasanya kita akan uh, buat investigation secara fully maksudnya bukan setakat kita just cakap saja tapi kita investigate daripada blood Uh, kepada brain, kepada everything lah. So biasanya kena bagi reason more on uh, just nak check up uh, sebabnya biasanya orang tua ni kalau di, di, di dalam COVID-19 lagi senang. Mm. Sebabnya uh, the reason to be ill for elderly is there. Cuma yeah. kita ada juga uh, elderly takut nak datang hospital sebab COVID-19. <laughs> Betul. Semua orang right. takut Prof. Semua orang bukan elderly je. Semua orang takut. <laughs> so another no, thing that Uh, to 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 reach to GP that is good sebab GP akan actually explain usually GP akan lebih uh, apa ni pandai bercakap eh, they are family doctors so the family doctor know how to deal with the elderly uh, kalau untuk Malay kalau nak pergi haji there is screening for cognitive uh, ECAT screening so uh, nak tak nak kalau fail memang kita terpaksa jumpa kami jugalah so uh, so that is part of the haji punya screening tapi untuk ada, uh, basically uh, bring to the nearest clinic, to the primary care, GPs or KK. So it's good just to get check up. And then from there, we actually uh, akan um, kita buat uh, build up the management plan lah. Hmm. So uh, macam tu lah. So uh, sebenarnya tadi saya tertarik ya, eh, Sandra. Kita panggil reminiscent therapy. Maksudnya kita cerita pasal pas. Memang kita guna tools tu hmm. untuk elderly yang ada dementia sebabnya itu sahaja memory yang dia ada kita jangan duk paksa dia apa benda yang baru so yang dia sebab it feels so good to them so it reduce dia punya anxiety it reduce dia punya uh, depression and then bila dia tak buat hal dia tak buat perangai anak-anak pun okay so that's why they need the ruang untuk bercakap untuk bercerita eh, cerita pasal the past which is you did the very good job Uh, to listen to them. Sebab kadang-kadang family member tak nak dengar. Betul. Oh, yeah, yeah, because because it's, re it's repetitive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes what um the technique I use is actually, I will actually tell, like if the family members come and approach me first, normally I will say, don't say the word check up. So my, my style is that I always will tell them, you tell them that I am very bored, okay? These, they, these old people, they love to talk to doctors. It's the matter whether the doctor has the time for you or not. Mm. So like Prof kata tadi, GP is memang the best. I will memang say that. So what they normally do is that I sometimes, so I will tell them, okay, just say that I'm bored, okay, and I want to just talk to them. I wanted to ask them something about their profession or how to raise the kids, macam tu. And then when they come in, so daripada yang kalau kita balik tadi tu, how do we kita macam nak di nak diagnose mereka kan kita buat macam cognitive therapy uh, kita nak kita tanya kita check dia punya tone reflect dia punya memory macam tu is while we actually talk to them 
And sometimes kalau memang I tak ada kerja pun like my regular patients that I dah memang tahu who, who are senile ke or have this kind of problems, I call them from the clinic. I call them and I say that I'm so bored and everything. Can you please come? Nobody wants to see me. Or I'll, I'll actually tell them I miss my parents because I originally from KL. So bila I duduk kat Langkawi and everything, they know. So they think that they're coming to actually spend time with me. Okay, but they don't know that I'm actually checking. So while talking, then what will happen is that we'll do the BP check and everything. And then we go like, oh my God, you haven't done your blood test and everything. Ah, this is what lah. This is what happened. Ah, you did this, this, this. And they like when you actually berlate. They, they don't like when you scold them. But they like when you like, like you know, you like, like nag at them a little bit. So that is how we actually do. So sometimes, kalau you don't know how to bring your parents, just approach the doctor dulu tell about your parents punya character and everything normally we kami boleh dah nak plus minus kami boleh tahu ah uh, okay nak ajak depa nak mai macam mana macam tu uh, and then sometimes uh, ada yang uh, suka cut off bila parents bagi tahu tentang ubat actually kami ada banyak kerja we doctors actually i have sometimes a lot of patient tapi saja je nak tanya dia orang tentang ubat ya um, i also give them their medication lepas tu i ask them to show It's like a jigsaw puzzle for them actually. Mm-hmm. They show which is which and which is which and why they take mm-hmm. that for, you know. And then sometimes you have to purposely argue with them juga. Uh, argue mm-hmm. with them. Then when they try to correct mm-hmm. you, you know whether or where they stand macam tu. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, memang kena ada teknik. Korang nak paksa mak bapak you like like Prof kata just now, okay. It is still your mother. Okay, it's like you can score your child, but when you score your mother, it's an entirely different story. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, so like, um, how about prevention, Prof? Is there, is there really, pre- I'm, I'm sure a lot of us now, right now, tengah stress. Sebab Prof kata tadi 35 ke 40 ke mungkin dah boleh ada. You know, and a lot of ladies, ah, dia macam, after delivery, a lot of patients come to me, kata, doctor, I feel very forgetful after my delivery, actually including me juga. So, is there any prevention for this? <laughs> okay. Okay. The one that usually, when in our age, I mean, when in the young generation, why they forget is because the attention problem. Mm. Yes, you have so many things. You are wonder woman. Meaning that you try to do everything in one go. Yeah. And then definitely is so mindful, full of things. So then you tend to forget. So Banyak that is the thing. Banyak benda like... nak pergi. Yeah. So uh, for, for the first part, be gentle to yourself. Okay? So be gentle to yourself. Try to find out. And there is no uh, multitasking actually. The multitasking definitely is good. But you know what is your limit. So definitely, you are not the main thing, but you have so many to do, and then you lost focus uh, because of that. Okay, but hmm. in in uh in try to prevent dementia, the good thing is practicing healthy lifestyle from now, from from before your brain cell is dying. Okay, it start to slow down, but. Practicing healthy lifestyle. So how to practice healthy lifestyle? This is based on the finger study. Fingers ni, uh, they start dekat finish. Fingers jetric uh, intervention for cognitive impairment and disability to prevent it. So they buat more on uh, to control the diet. Huh? Uh, diet, uh, less red meat, more white meat. Uh, that study use Mediterranean diet. Cuma That's finger dia dah jadi... Uh, why uh, worldwide dah sampai ke Malaysia dah sampai ke Singapore to adjust within the culture tapi the keyword here adalah healthy lifestyle healthy eating uh, so maksudnya kat sini healthy eating adalah less uh, le- uh, less uh, apa ni kita kata red meat more white meat uh, in fact uh, the most interesting I selalu cakap oh I drink coffee because coffee Found to be prevention because I uh, antioxidant. Well, <laughs> so because just the reason for me to drink coffee. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So cuma je kita kata uh, basically uh, try to eat antioxidant uh, uh, food. Uh, so try to avoid all the oily things. Uh, two time, uh, uh, two times a week exercise, uh, aerobic and non aerobic kind of that thing. Avoid uh, smoking. Avoid alcohol. So it's more on practicing healthy lifestyle. And then the other component adalah cognitive training. 
So meaning that uh, that's why uh, you need to read a lot to do the Sodoku part, uh, word puzzle, or it's just a matter of reading. Uh, reading is a process that you use. So we have Tomade that live more than 96, uh, 10. Okay, kita have mm. uh, the late Tengku <laughs> Aziz. So those who are actually using the brain actually uh, would prevent us to be dementia. So like in um, like in Muslim, uh, those who have us, uh, Quran will actually prevent it. It's because of the mental exercise. So uh, so now uh, practicing healthy lifestyle, uh, cognitive uh, exercising. So in fact, um, one of the practice sebenarnya, uh, mental exercising, kita boleh guna game pun. Because game actually, uh, using the game untuk cognition. Sebab kita tahu planning kat mana, all that thing. So tapi not that accessory, uh, excessively play game. Tapi yeah, it's nah. like one of the Everything the in moderation lah, Prof. Kan? Ah, Cuma ni sleep. Another one is sleep. So it's more or less healthy lifestyle. So Sandra ni, uh, saya dengar tadi, you are the the wellness kan ya, friend wellness promotion. So you start uh, uh, early. So bila start early, the brain cell actually has their own muscle. So macam kita kata, muscle betul ada muscle. Brain cell pun sebenarnya dia ada muscle dia. So when you keep practicing, uh, keep uh, exercising, dia akan build up the muscle tu. So it prevent to become degenerative. So kita boleh uh, prevent daripada dia mati. So uh, so start sekarang ni. <laughs> yes, so we have to start right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so la. apparently health seems to be the answer to everything. La. So we've got to stop our lifestyle. fast food. La. Yes. You won't believe, Prof, there's only another four minutes for us. It's like, you know, we haven't gone right. to Q&A. Right. Okay. So I Let's want go. to Let's start go. off <laughs> with a very controversial question, Okay, which I'm very sure is in a lot of people's mind. But because of our culture, we don't ask this question. We are too afraid of it. Okay, If one already, there's a question is, if one already has such symptoms, should one be left alone at home or be safer to stay at like a nursing home where there's proper uh, and continued elderly care compared to staying at home being cared by any family member macam tu what okay. do you think okay this is the thing that okay uh, uh, in malay culture or in malaysia culture usually uh, we keep our elder with us okay uh, kind of that thing but in overseas in the, uh, kita panggil um, advanced country ataupun developed country, they have a role meaning that if there's this patient having dementia, they no longer safe to be at home and need to be in nursing home. And they have a very good service for uh, uh, Alzheimer nursing home, kind of that thing. So uh, nursing home placement. Tapi di Malaysia, we don't have that kind of uh, kita panggil extensive services. Kita ada nursing home tapi dia campur. Dia campur dengan uh, pelbagai cases. Uh, all the elderly, all these things. So kind of uh, that services is yet to be available tapi ada, bukan kata tak ada, especially in KL, uh, di Ipoh. Uh, sebab uh, some of my patient uh, will actually play sebab nobody able to look after. And then because uh, the elder sekarang ni, they live uh, alone ataupun independently, then bila dia dapat dementia, it is not safe for them to live alone. So we have to place him at the nursing home. So uh, so this is important that uh, placement in nursing home, not that we don't love our parent, but because of their safety. Uh, Saya so ada dua, tiga case yang mana uh, anak dia do overseas, uh, mm -hmm. overseas, uh, and then fathers uh, usually stay with uh, mother, but mother pass away, then uh, it become a lot of uh, problem. So this is the one that we have to put our uh, elders to the nursing home because of the safety reason. Kalau overseas, kalau in Australia, they put as a must to put at the nursing home. Ah. Walaupun dia ada rumah yang cantik, besar, ada make kind of that thing. Mm -hmm. Tapi uh, di Malaysia, we don't have yet that regulation. Please, yeah. So, uh, and then the support is limited. 
but for the safety reason, yeah, nursing home, nursing placement is the answer when patient is uh, really need continuous 27 care. Okay. So okay. Yeah, don't be sad if you have to put your elders, but you but have to regularly visit them, visit them. Uh, visit them, all that thing. It's just because of the safety reason, meaning that you can keluar, kena keluar pergi kerja, Hmm. And then um, you 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 tak ada orang kat rumah. Betul. So sometimes because of that they have to lock the elder. Yeah. Then, there is many cases yang mana elder ni buka, boleh buka kunci masuk dapur terbakar rumah. Kind of that thing. Hmm. So because of the safety reason. Cumanya kita tahu uh, sekarang ni dah start ada uh, day day care day care services. Cuma day care services sekarang ni juga tak terima asthma disease. So the carer put in memang juggling uh, nak kerti kerja ke nak kerja ke kind of that thing. So uh, we hope that the policy maker, the government will actually uh, build up that facility and that regulation. Okay, okay, Prof. Can we have the, the yeah. next question? Can we flash the next question? Okay, uh, from Zurai Pa. Hi, doctor. My mom has been done with vascular dementia. MRI scan, size otak tak mengecut. Adakah she potential menjadi eczema juga? Sefahaman saya dementia adalah payung besar. Di bawah ini adalah eczema vascular. If yes, adakah semua anak anak ada genetik ini? Okay. Kalau vascular, uh, tak semestinya anak ada genetik. Okay. Cuma uh, kecederaan otak akan boleh uh, menjadi Uh, risk factor ataupun faktor uh, risiko untuk dapat eczema. Cuma untuk kes macam mak ni, anak-anak tak ada genetic loading. Sebab waskula adalah kita ibaratkan stroke kecil yang berlaku dalam otak. Uh, stroke kecil maksudnya salur-salur darah yang halus tu tersumbat. So dia ada uh, gangguan kepada fungsi kognitif. Yeah, usually this is not genetic loading. Tapi this adalah last time. So yang ni untuk prevenan uh, mak jadi teruk, kontrol Uh, the underlying the, uh, disease, maksudnya kalau ada diabetic, uh, kecil manis, darah tinggi, control that risk factor, control cholesterol, and then buat exercise, maksudnya physical and also mental exercise, uh, back to health last time, dia akan boleh control the progress. Dia tak ada menurun macam Alzheimer. Dia akan static macam tu. Kecuali okay. kalau ada another event, dia akan turun balik. So, yeah, it's not a genetic loading. Okay. Uh, can we have the next question? Okay, uh, we don't have much time, so this will be the last. Dr. Sandra, can you please do the honors? Okay, um, this is from Zainiza. Kalau yeah. macam saya selalu lupa dari sekolah, menengah, sekarang makin lupa. Sampai nak beli barang, lebih dari dua barang perlu, perlu tulis. Kadang barang di rumah pun baru dialihkan pun dalam 10 minit bila nak cari balik dah tak ingat. Sampai kena duduk tenang dulu baru cari balik, baru jumpa. Adakah ini simptom penyakit yang doktor katakan? Okay, definitely hmm. bukanlah kita nak kata this unlikely hmm. untuk kita kata Alzheimer disease. <laughs> tapi mungkin hmm. penyakit lain. Ha? Antaranya yang contohnya adalah mungkin attention kita ada masalah. Mungkin hmm. ada attention deficit. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Cuma nya kalau kita pergi buat testing, kita tengok macam mana. Usually, uh, Alzheimer uh, bukan berlaku pada usia muda, tetapi uh, lebih kepada usia tua, dia ada progress. Sebab kalau macam ni, kita tengok, bila dia duduk tenang, dia dapat balik. Hmm. The memory. So, it's more pada attention deficit. Mungkin uh, ADD ke? Attention deficit ADD. disorder. Hmm. Uh, tapi like kita, ADHD uh, possible uh, also. Ha, Cuma ni kita tak boleh nak cakap sebab very limited information. Cuma kita nasihatkan pergi dapat screening so that kita boleh uh, properly diagnose apa benda ni. Tapi definitely saya rasa unlikely Alzheimer disease lah. Okay. okay. So, right, I think that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Prof. Dr. Uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Asrini Abdul Razak, Dr. Sandra. Any last words from you guys? I think Prof. Go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what i would like to to happen ni bagi tahu kat semua orang early detection early awareness i mean awareness about this problem is really needed so early detection help a lot so kita boleh uh, mengurangkan uh, kita orang burden of care ataupun mengurangkan risiko-risiko uh, yang lain bila kita boleh treat awal insyaallah kita boleh rawat dan kita boleh slow down the disease progress itu saja
Okay, bagus Sandra. Yes. So ada orang kata tadi tu sometimes the blood is going up meaning the blood pressure <laughs> is going up. So when you want your blood pressure to go down, we need to detect early. And always remember when you were young, your parents punya blood pressure were probably not going up, you know, going sky high. Okay, so please guys, I would really like um sebagai seorang general practitioner ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu ramai yang tak tahu GP tu apa, kami ataupun saya adalah pengamal perubatan am di mana kami jaga family daripada anak sampai orang tua, okey. Ramai antara orang tua saya semua tak dapat care yang sepatutnya. So saya nak minta anda semua tolong like kita punya webinar hari ini. Prof dah spend banyak masa untuk untuk nak nak you know duduk dengan kita explain to you all please like please share please let spread the awareness supaya burden you all pun berkurang dan kita punya warga emas pun get to live a better life and all that's right. all bye okay. thank you dr sandra <laughs> thank you prof um next uh, topic we have on link uh, it's a collaboration between astrowani and google Uh, the title is Protect Your Business Data Now, How to Set Up a Safe and Secure Environment, a Secure and Online Environment for Your Business. Okay, so this is happening on September 14 at 11 a.m. So you guys, you guys ada uh, macam nak tahu pasal benda-benda macam ni, okay, online environment for your business, boleh join kita punya webinar. All right, macam biasa, register on link.astrowani.com. All right, thank you so much everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again, uh, Prof and Dr. Sandra. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.